Let us go to God in prayer. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and power from on high. Now, Lord God, be with me as I proclaim your message. And may your message come through me or in spite of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture lesson is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. One of my favorite sections in the letter to the Ephesians. I'm beginning in the 10th chapter, 10th verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. I'm just going to read one more verse here. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. Love that. And I love that first verse. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power put on the whole armor of God so that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. In other words, God's going to give us everything we need to get through our lives. And as I was thinking about this text and, the, and throughout the week, I was thinking about all the options that our world gives to us. There was a day when you could buy a car, whatever color you wanted, as long as it was black. Now, all that's changed quite a bit. Last week, I went to the store, and I wanted to buy a white shirt, a white short sleeve shirt. It took me 15 minutes to find a white short sleeve shirt. You know why? Because of all the options. You see, I'm, I'm not a shopper. I'm a buyer. I go in and I want a white shirt, and if somebody tells me I need a purple shirt, no, I want a white shirt. I don't look at the purple shirts, I don't look at the yellow shirts, I look at the white shirts, because that's what a buyer does. Well, with all these options, you can be shopping for a half an hour. For some of you, that might not seem like a lot, but that's an eternity for me at Macy's. But anyhow, we have all these options, and it would be nice if we had fewer choices that could be made, less stuff we have to deal with, less things that we, we need to put on our calendar. It would be nice if life were a whole lot simpler. Not only that, on the consumer level we have so many options, we also have other options as well. We can decide so many things that we can watch on the web or on television. We have all these things that are happening and some of the people as we watch things on the web and on TV, we begin to believe them. And one of the things that, that many people are saying is that the church is, is becoming more and more irrelevant within our society. In fact, that may have come from this pulpit as well once in a while. But consider this. On a given Sunday and Saturday, over 50 million people go to church and worship God Amen. in this country. Now, add up everybody attending a professional football game, professional baseball game, an NBA game, college football, 
high school football in a given week, it wouldn't even come close to the 50 million or more people coming to worship. What's that say? That says that the church is not irrelevant, but a lot of times what happens is we all come to church and we want to live in peace and we do live in peace. The majority of people are good, but that's not what we hear. We don't hear that, that, that most are nonviolent, most want to live a time of peace. Yet we choose to listen to such things or it's chosen for us to listen about all the things that are going on in our, in our world. Mass killings, economic woes, violent conflicts throughout the world, the political discourse that we're listening to on the television, I don't know about you, but makes me absolutely sick, where there's character assassinations instead of uh, uh, there should be a priority on the substantive issues of this nation, but rather we just start beating everybody up and nothing gets done. And so we see all that stuff happening as one of the 50 million people that are in worship on Sunday morning and we, have, we get disgusted and we get frustrated and often acquiescing to the very lifestyles that we abhor. We put our hands up and say, I can't do this. We begin to retreat saying, I don't have the time. I, I, can't, I can't keep on keeping on. And so we retreat back. We come to church on Sunday morning and we, we want to kind of stay away from the rest of the world because the rest of the world just um, seems to be uh, uh, losing a wheel or two. So what happens? We have so many things that we can choose to do. We have so many options in our life. Yet we need to seek a different path. We need to take away some of those options. We need to take a look that, uh, to what is right and what is true. But that takes power, power from on high. We can't do that ourselves because the world would rather have us all taken up with looking at three dozen colors of shirts. Would rather have us taken up looking at the news and all the bad stuff, rather than what God would have us taken up to do. We say that we don't have time to serve the church, that we don't have time to serve God, we don't have time to do this, we don't have time to do that. And what Paul is saying when he says this is not a, a, a battle of flesh and blood, it's a spiritual battle. Whenever we start saying to God, but I don't have the time, whenever we start saying, what, after reading, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power, put on the whole armor of God so that you may withstand the wiles of the devil, but we're putting a big but in front of God. That really didn't sound very good, did it? I, I, I apologize for that. But it's true. When we start putting butts in front of what God commands us to do, it's no longer a battle of flesh and blood. It is now a spiritual battle. And the spiritual battle is that we need to accept not the way society tends to be taking us, but where God would want us to go. And what we may not understand is we have the power of the universe to be able to do that. I was thinking about a Lamborghini. I don't know why. I've never sat in a Lamborghini. I've only seen one in my life. I don't own one. It's probably about the value of this whole building. When I thought about sitting in the seat of a Lamborghini, kind of nice, but it does nothing, does it? The fastest production, well, non-production car in the world. If you sit in the seat, nothing happens, does it? If you turn the engine on, you, you hear that purr, or probably more like a deep roar. 
But still, nothing happens, does it? It's not until you put that vehicle in the first gear and put the accelerator on that you will know the power that that vehicle has. The same with God. If all we're doing is sitting in the pew and saying, boy, God is powerful, God is great, God is good, but never put that into practice, what happens? Absolutely nothing. But when we put on the armor of God, when we put on Christ, when we put on the power of the Holy Spirit, we begin to, to know what it is to have that full armor. We begin to know what it is to have God uh, taking control of our life. We may, though, feel that even through all this stuff, that we may be ill-equipped to do what God has called us to do. We may feel ill-equipped to serve God. We may feel ill-equipped when we're coming up to Rally Sunday. Oh, and you're going to have fun going down the hall. It's down that way. And see all the ministries that are going on in the church and all the opportunities you have to serve. You can look at a poster and say, you know what? I've never taught Sunday school in my life. I can't do it. Oh, really? You can't do it? But God has empowered you to do it. God has called you to do it. As soon as we start saying we can't do it, guess what? It becomes a spiritual battle. We don't know the power of God until we put God in practice in our own life. Or what would happen if... if, if, if if life gave us an economic or a health curveball, we say, we can't handle this. We've been to question our own ability to handle that. Or anything else that the world may put before us. We begin to question God. Have you ever questioned God before? I'll put my hand up. I wonder why God does the things God does. I question God quite a bit. Sometimes I yell at God. Never swear at God. But I yell at God and say, why? Well, sometimes that happens. But guess what? We're not alone. So did Jeremiah. So did Isaiah. So did Moses. So did Ezekiel. So did St. Paul. So did St. Peter. We could go on and on and on and on. Glenn's doing the study of women in the Bible. If we did a study of men in the Bible, what you'd find is 98% of them question their calling to God. Then what about Job? I was thinking about Job as well. Now here's a guy who lost everything. I got in big trouble a couple of years ago here with the Thursday night Bible study talking about Job. Mary, and you're nodding your head. Yeah, I sure did. Well, Job was talking to God. Well, not really. God was doing the talking. Tonight, after you read Ephesians 6, read Job 38 to 41. And what you'll hear is this. God tells Job, sit down. I am going to talk. And you are going to listen. Sit down and shut up. And so what did God tell Job? Do you have a problem? You think you can't come to me? I'll tell you what. Were you there when I laid the foundation of the universe? Were you there when I was walking in, in the bottom of the ocean looking um, at Leviathan? Were you there when I put the clouds in the sky? Were you there, Joe? Were you there, Joe, when I gave the wisdom of the ages to the people? Were you there, Job? Tell me. Speak to me. And this goes on and on and on and on. It's a hoot. You know, when you read it tonight, read it a couple of times. And then, and then finally Job says, I know you can do all things. Therefore, I repent. And I will give all to you. Pretty cool. But oftentimes what happens in our lives, we start saying, Lord, I know you can do all things. Therefore, I repent. And will give all to you. But, look, I can't. I know but. 
Again, we always put a big butt in front of what God calls us to do. I know you give me all I need, God. I know you're giving me the grace. I know you're giving me the power. I know you're giving me the armor. I get the salvation helmet and all that kind of thing. I know the Holy Spirit. I know, but... And God comes back. But what, Tom? But what? I'm giving you everything. So as Jim Cimbala of the Brooklyn Tabernacle writes, whatever God calls us to do, God will also be faithful to equip us to do it. You see, when God calls us, God's not going to leave us alone. God's going to give us the armor. God's going to give us everything. God's going to give us the words and will equip us to do what God has called us to do. God's not going to leave us orphaned. God's not going to leave us alone. God's going to give us the strength. God's going to give us everything to overcome the slings and arrows of this world, to go a more excellent way. You see, we're equipped again with the power of the universe. The Spirit of God gives us strength to overcome the world. Anything that's set in our way. To overcome what we may perceive from television or whatever like that. Just remember that we are a part of over 50 million people on a Sunday morning sitting and worshiping God. You see, people, God will put people around us to give us the strength to continue. It's a spiritual battle. Anytime we start saying, but to God, it's a spiritual battle. But God, it's a spiritual battle. When we start to question, it's a spiritual battle. But once we begin to accept what God has given to us, we start seeing life in a new way. I've been accused of looking at life through rose-colored glasses. A couple of churches ago, this guy said, Preacher, that was when I was down south. I didn't have a name down there. I was just preacher. I was telling the folks between services that I went to the, uh, the food line down there, and when you hear somebody yell, Hey, preacher, four other guys turn around and say, you know, We don't know. But, but anyhow, this guy comes up to me and says, Tom, or preacher, all you see is things through rose-colored glasses. I said, thank God for that. Thank God I can look and, and, and by the glory of God, by the grace of God, I can look at, a, at, at our congregation, and when I look at you, I see the love of God, I see grace, I see power, I see joy, I see friends. God, that's a good thing. And if that takes rose-colored glasses, then it takes rose-colored glasses. If all we see is the goodness in the world, thank God for that. Thank God for that. So when we pick up the Holy Spirit, we start seeing through God-colored glasses. We start seeing life how God would have us to see it, how, how God would see the people around us and would set in place those people to help us with the calling that God has given to us, would make room on our calendar for God. Pretty cool stuff. God will equip us well for doing the work of God. We are well-equipped saints to do the work of God, to be positive in our relationship with each other, in our relationship with God, to walk with God. For it's far better to walk with the sun on our back, and I don't know whether that's S-U-N or S-O-N, or rain in our face. God will give us the positive attitude God will give us everything we need. So what if God gives, or the world gives us options? God will call us to choose the most excellent option. We can do it, saints. No buts. For when we are equipped by God, self-doubt melts away and replaced by hope of a new day. 
we're well equipped to understand that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you take nothing else out of this service, remember that God will never leave you and that nothing, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for the privilege of serving you, for, for helping us as you call us to, to use the gifts you've given to us. Lord, bless the gifts we're going to lay before you here this morning, that they may be a blessing to you and give glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.